Network can watch. Presenting three easy steps to the internet. Step one. Plug in. Step two. Get connected. Step three. <laughs> There's no step three. There's no step three. <laughs> already know the best actors, the best comedians, the best stunt people, and the best costume designers. Hey, maybe you should be a director. Desktop Movies, now premiering on an iMac near you. All of the images you are about to see on the large screen will be generated by what's in that bag. Hello, I'm Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. Millions of people bought a Mac because it did things that no other computer could do. It really got people excited to, this is a personal computer like none other before. And for many years, Apple got away from that. It forgot how to be different. The original Mac is an impossible act to follow. But I think what, what we can do is, is one benefit from the philosophy that was really the foundation for the original Macintosh. This product came to be because the exec staff said, stop. Let's focus on one thing, making the best personal computer, a computer that Macintosh customers will truly love. Well, what computer would the Jetsons have had? That's the perfect way of capturing the problem, which was, it was like the future yesterday. It defined simplicity, you know, elegance, incredible ease of use, tremendous performance, and great value. This particular machine really delivers on that promise. It makes you feel uh, a lot like you felt when you first sat down to use your Macintosh. When we have this, this wealth of creativity that cross our campuses, that cross our schools in K through 12. What we want to do is to unleash that capability. The team was a hand-picked team from around the world. It's a remarkable place to be as a designer. There's one company where this group could exist, and that's unquestionably Apple. That's what gets me really jazzed, and gets me up in the morning, is, is coming in every day and knowing, you know, I'm working with a world-class team to build the best products in the world. Wow. That's, that's some look, that's some box. My first reaction was, my gosh, what is that? People have to use their hands to describe it. They struggle to find words to describe it. That's the first time we've seen something in our industry that wasn't a uh, beige box. Just imagine what's going to happen the first time somebody gets one of these home. I'm going to pull this thing out, I'm going to pick it up, and it's this gorgeous new shape. But the surface as well is totally seductive. I mean, it's a lovely thing to touch and to hold. This cool keyboard with translucent keycaps. The connectors are, are translucent. I'm going to pull out this, this exciting new mouse. It looks like no other mouse you've ever seen before. You turn it on and it comes alive. It's always changing. It's always moving. And before you know it, in the first five minutes of opening the box, you're already in love with this thing. I'd like to play with one, I want to see one, I want to see what it'll do, I want to put it through its paces. But then you look a little farther and you say, holy smokes, look at the capabilities of this machine. Because inside is the heart of the lion. I mean, this thing screams. This is not last year's product rehashed, this is next year's product delivered today. A lot of power, a lot of features. Uh, it's attractive, it's exciting, and it's well-priced. That's what customers are looking for. We're going to sell tons of them, and, and I think this is the first product that will make PC buyers switch to Mac. You see shock and recognition that, my God, Apple wasn't sitting back in this affordable consumer space. They truly have a great idea here. The fact that the Apple name is now, once again, going to stand for every man, everybody, mass market, I think is terrific news for all of us. We talk internally. Will we have enough product to take care of the demand? I'd like the first one off the production line. I, I will stand there at the end of the production line when the first one comes off. Well, our consumers have been loyal, they've been patient, they've been frustrated, they've been zealots, okay. Well, it's going to show it paid off waiting. Hello, I'm 
Greg Red K Red K Mods and welcome to episode 4 of season 3 of my Power PC series. In today's episode we'll be introducing you to my iMac G3s right here and uh, going over all the details about them. Now I have a grape and a blueberry and this would be the second generation of the iMac G3 and this is a very special episode because even though it's about a month late it is the 20th anniversary of the IMAX release. In fact, sorry, I'm trying to catch my breath. These are heavy. <laughs> but anyway, in fact, these were introduced on May of um, 1998, and they started selling these August 15th, 1998. It is now September, so I'm about a month late. But here's to, to 20 years of IMAX. And if it hadn't been for this, Apple would have been dead. These systems basically more or less single-handedly saved Apple from um, bankruptcy. And uh, these were very unique systems. And I'll pick one of these up again. Ugh. They were a very unique system. Now, like I said before, these are the second generations. The first generations which were introduced in 1998 were known as the tray load uh, systems. Uh, they had revision A through D, I think. And revision A and B, I think, were Bondi Blue. And then they came out with the five flavors, which would be C through D. And then in late 1999, they introduced the slot loads and kept the same colors for the first release which was the five flavors again. And two of those flavors, I can't remember all of them right off hand. One was strawberry. I think one was tangerine. I can't quite remember. Um, blueberry, grape, and lime, I think. Those were the five colors, uh, five flavors. And then they continued on the product line with the second uh, generation uh, introducing different revisions of the hardware and changing up the colors to a more solid, um, less transparent, translucent color schemes um, and much darker colors. These They went from a very light color to a darker color. They had different colors like indigo, which is one of my favorite colors I don't have yet, and a few other things. Uh, graphite, snow, etc., etc. They even released um, print colors, which were Dalmatian and uh, Flower Power. I think those were the only two. I don't like those. It was pretty ugly. <laughs> but um, they're collector's items now, and they're worth tons because no one liked them then either. But anyway, getting back to the point, here are my systems here. Um, between this system and um, a few other things, uh, like for instance, Microsoft investing, I think it was 15 million, 15 million? I think it was 15 million into Apple um, and licensing uh, agreements with them to do things for a few years. And this is what saved Apple more or less. And these were very important, very special, most popular computer of the late 90s and early 2000s and it was very apparent from um, many different things from uh, novelty things like a iMac shaped uh, pencil sharpener or an iMac shaped clock um, in fact I think my mother had a iMac shaped um, paper clip holder something like that but there the history of this stuff's very heavy um, and speaking of heavy, these are actually pretty light, but when you're holding two of them, they're pretty heavy. Uh, these were still pretty portable. Um, and kind of remind me of the original Macintosh. Handle on them, all in one design. Very close to that in that aspect. And the differences between the first revisions, uh, the first generation, the second generation, was tray load. Second revision came with um, Harman Kardon speakers built into them and um, second revision came with slot load. 
Steve Jobs originally wanted the slot loads in the first uh, generation of the iMac G3, which didn't happen. And they didn't tell Steve that until right before the unveil. He almost, he almost canceled the whole release uh, because he did not want tray loads. And um, at the time, the technology just wasn't around that was good enough for all that. So um, they finally talked him into letting them release the tray load with the promise that they would be releasing a slot load eventually. And they did. And I think it was October of 99. They introduced the second generation, and um, you know, it was a success. And I have a lot of memories with these, uh, and my, admiring them from afar. I was a PC kid. Grew up in an area where everything was PC. In fact, I never played with one of these until I was probably in first or second grade at a museum. The museum was full of these um, for activities and games. And that's the first time I got to hold the Puck Mouse. The Puck Mouse. The Puck Mouse is a piece of junk, uh, in my opinion. I hated it then, and I still hate it today. And that was really the only time I really got to play with one of these. And um, on a side note, if you ever really, if you're a big fan of Puck Mice, Check out Jay Vry's uh, blog, The House of Moth. He has a whole ode to the puck mouse um, posting on his puck mice. He has one of every color. Very interesting read. Description will be below. But anyway, getting back to all this, the only other time that I ever played with one was, I believe, in a circuit city. Uh, this would have been probably around 2002. I don't remember what color it was. I think it was a 700 megahertz. Um, so it was a DV, um, pretty powerful uh, for an iMac G3. It might have been the 600. But anyway, I almost bought one of those as a little kid. I had just enough money saved up to buy one, but um, I didn't. And I sometimes kind of regret I didn't because I would have been in the Max a lot sooner. Um, but other than that, those are the only two times I really got to play with one until I actually owned these. Now the Blueberry was um, sold to me by my good friend and um, new Patreon supporter, Michael Stanhope. Great guy. Thank you, Mike. Um, I went over, I drove over and picked it up from him. And then the grape you saw in the first uh, At Jay's House video when Jay gave this to me. Jay gave me this one, Jay Fry. And uh, if you want to check out that video, just check this link right up here. Very funny video to watch. But these are the two systems. We'll mostly be going over the Blueberry, but I will show you the Grape briefly. Um, the Blueberry is more built up right now. The case is kind of worn and uh, damaged in areas. Uh, the previous owner, I don't know what they did to it, uh, Mike and I both think it was probably owned by an old folks home or something like that. And um, it, it might have just been old, owned by an old person. And they had a lot of vintage car pictures and stuff on it, which I enjoyed looking at those, but um, I still wiped everything. Um, but I assume their neighbor kid or something, someone decided to take a flathead screwdriver and pry the case open to upgrade the hard drive. The hard drives originally came, I think, with 4 gigs, something like that. And this has a 20 gig, I think, in it now. And I am dual booting OS 9.22 and Tiger in it. And then Jay's Grape I have not touched. It is still running OS 9.22 on it. The Blueberry I have upgraded some with spare RAM modules I had laying around. I took it up from, I think, 192 megs of RAM to 512. And I was lucky, I got an airport card with the adapter, really cheap. Uh, the guy, I guess, didn't know what he had. He listed it really cheap. I bought it instantly the second I saw it because the next one, search eBay, two listings pop up. First one for, I think, I don't know how much I got it for, like. $13, and 
The second one, which I think is still on eBay's listings, is over 100 bucks. So yeah, these adapters are very rare and expensive. I'll be showing you that in the video. But um, this thing's been upgraded with airport, and this is still stock. I think it's got 128 megs of RAM in it, and that's about it. It's these are both 400 DVs. Um, when they were first introduced, the second generation, you had the 350s, which were not DVs, and they did not have FireWire, and they didn't have an external VGA port, um, and I think that was about all the differences on those. Then you had the DV. DV stands for digital video, and these systems had FireWire ports, two FireWire 400s, and they run at 400 megahertz. Okay, and these, the first generation, um, uh, well, first revision of the second generation uh, are actually G4 compatible. And this blueberry, probably, I don't think I'm going to touch the grape. Uh, this blueberry is probably going to be another DOS Tube 1 collab, but this time we're going to do it in person at his house one day. That'd be fun. We'll swap out the G4, overclock it to like 500, 550. And just have a good old time. I'm looking forward to that, Colin. I hope you're watching. I hope you're excited for that too. But anyway, well, I've been rambling on a long time, and I've basically told you everything there is to know about these systems. So let's show you now. So let's go. It's alive! Okay, so we'll start off by showing you uh, just how neat these things look like when they're lit up with my camera light <laughs> actually and actually what we're doing here is showing you more than just that i am thinking of maybe adding leds to this white leds somewhere in it to make it glow that would be cool but um you know since this one would be highly modified that would be very possible um but even the grape looks semi cool all lit up like that but the other reason why I was actually doing this to start off the video about these is to show you that they are transparent and it's amazing what Apple fit into these. And uh, this is the best way to really show you what's inside without having to open it. It is literally just a CRT monitor. This one in this case is pretty dirty, it needs cleaned. It's just literally a CRT monitor on the inside right here and it takes up probably about 75 percent of the case and then down below it is the logic board down there pretty neat design there and yeah so anyway I'm going to turn on the lights and we'll actually show you these systems so let's go okay so here is blueberry and grape grape is a nice purple and blueberry is this nice blue color that was also the same color as one of the colors that the iBook G3 clamshell came out in like my uh, G4 uh, clamshell and also the blue and white came out as in so I have basically one of each device ever that came out in blueberry except for the first uh, generation um, iMacs I don't have one of those uh, tray loads, but you know this is this is a, in my opinion, better design. These systems had um, AGP-based graphics in them compared to the um, tray load ones that had um, PCI graphics, and because of that, if you do a G4 swap in these, they're automatically Leopard compatible, where the other ones have to be hacked because Leopard doesn't officially work with PCI graphic uh, systems. Um, and so far I don't have any Leopard hacked systems other than my blue and white, which can run Leopard and has ran Leopard, but the hacked version of it doesn't work quite right yet. I'll be doing another video on my blue and white soon. I'll be swapping the board out in it and trying to finally make it a gigabyte um, powered system uh, RAM wise. By getting back to these systems, here are the two colors. Grape was a very rare color from what I've been able to tell. Um, you can never find the keyboards or mice for these unless you're 
willing to pay an arm and a leg for them, and I'm not uh, currently uh, willing to pay as much as uh, they go for. <laughs> But yeah, the grape seems to be the most rare color. You don't see grape very often. And it's one of my favorite colors just because, one, how rare it is, and two, it's a pretty nice purple. And purple is a nice color on systems like this. In fact, I want to find someone that can make a uh, PNW um, Power Mac G3. That'd be funny. A PNW, purple and white. Uh, that would be cool to have a grape. Um, Power Mac G3. But anyway, getting back to the point again. So the, this is the grape right here. This grape J. Fry gave me. And um, it's a little dirty. But um, it's in very good shape. The only thing that is really wrong with it, because the case is nearly perfect, is um, when Jay was moving from Florida to Ohio, it got bashed around some. And we'll show you. But before we do that, now I'm not going to show you the ports on this one since I'm showing you on this one. They have the same ports in them. But we have a microphone, um, audio out, two Firewire 400s. The non-DVEs didn't have this. Was, this was just a blank area. Dial-up modem, um, reset button, program switch for flashing the firmware, two USB 1.1s, and a uh, a 10100 Ethernet. Okay. And then back here we have the power port. Now we'll tilt this forward and put it on the screen. And we'll show you the problems it has. The foot broke during his move. And it's a bummer because you can't find this replacement plastic anymore. It's basically impossible to find. Blueberry was apparently the most common color. And you can find those everywhere. And that's very uh, apparent because the 9DV models um, were all blueberry as far as I know. So, yeah, blueberry is a very common case. In fact, I think this is a 350s case with a DV board in it. So... Who knows how what happened to this system in its lifetime. But anyway, looking back under here, we can look. It's really neat. Apple even matched the uh, text on it. But yeah, these these the, the foot broke. Um, it does still work, but it's barely held in. This plastic gets brittle over time, and this must have just got bashed really hard. It broke the feet. He couldn't find the rest of the pieces to try to glue it back together. Oh well, it's still a really neat system. Now, if we look here, I'll show you this on the Blueberry, but this is the mem memory and um, airport slot, and this is where the um, VGA port is. There's a cover on here. Now, the non-DV versions have um, this cover here, but this is just blank. There is no VGA port in there. And I actually have the VGA port uh, opened up on the blueberry, which I'll show you in a second. But um, that's where that is. So anyway, this is the grape. I like it. It's, like I said, probably my second or third favorite iMac color. Um, very cool color. But that is not the um, famous system uh, of this episode today. We're going to be showing you everything on this because this is maxed, um, not maxed out, but um, really highly specced out. Uh, you can go up to a gig of RAM in this. This only has 512 megs in it, but it's still got a good amount of RAM for iMac G3. So we're going to show you this. I'm going to move the grape out of the way so we can have more room to show you everything that's in this. So one second. Okay, so here's my blueberry. And um, this is going to be the system we're showing you everything about in. Um, and this is what it looks like. Uh, this is... Um, it's had a rough life from what you can tell, um, but every single part in it is fully functional. Even the disk drive, which we'll show you, it s sounds really neat when it's spinning. So, first off we'll go around the case here. And we can show you all the marring spots where someone tried to pry open with a screwdriver. And this is where the biggest problem is. 
Now the white plastic underneath this and uh, even this translucent plastic here gets very brittle. And um, this is a common thing when you open one of these up, the uh, case tabs will snap off. And this one has had that problem. And it's not a huge loss though. But this is also why you sometimes find these with missing Apple logos. Because this literally comes out and that's what it looks like. It's pretty neat. But um, yeah, the case will crack and then during moving these systems or something, the case will start spreading apart and now it's got hair stuck in it. Try to get that hair out of there. There we go. But anyway, they'll move around and the logo will fall out. So that's one of the problems with these. And this, this white plastic in here, as we can see, also um, try to spin that there. Uh, there we go, got the logo back in. That white plastic can shatter during shipping, so it's hard to uh, get one of these in one piece. If you ship them out, all that will shatter through there. And that, that sucks. The, uh, the plastic's getting very brittle on these systems. And uh, the bottom, of course, is made out of polycarbonate like the, the uh, blue and white and the first generation clamshells. But anyway, here is the VGA panel. Uh, we will be running this off a of VGA mirrored screen. You can mirror the uh, screens on these. And uh, we'll do it on a VGA so this has a better refresh rate. You won't have a nightmare trying to watch it. But yeah, as, as we look here, the, the feet are still in one piece on this. And they'll uh, flip down like that. And that raises it up, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And that's how that works. Then the spec sticker says it's a, a, a non-DV, but it is, in fact, a DV model. So this isn't the original case. Who knows what happened to this case? It's, it's gone through heck. But anyway, we're going to open up this. Um, see if I have something to pry open with. Uh, hmm. Aha! See if this works. And here is the RAM slot. This is where we put the RAM. This is also where the airport card adapter goes. And um, in here you can see a whole mess of things. Real neat stuff in here. Let's uh, move this fan, so, I mean uh, this light off of the camera so I can lighten this better. Here we go. That's what the insides of the memory slot looks like. If we pull out the uh, airport adapter, whoops, that holds the uh, airport antenna when there's no airport in here. I'll have to put that back in. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, here's the adapter, which is not coming out. Why is it not coming out? Well, I might be showing you the adapter. What is going on here? Okay, yeah. Got to push on these levers. There we go. This is the really rare adapter board. Disconnect the antenna here. These can take um, one of those um, cards like was in my um, 800 G4, um, the Lucent um, Waveland cards. This adapter will work with one of those too. It will stick out a little further over here. But um, this is the airport card on the adapter. And the adapter plugs up into this little socket right in here. Without the adapter, you can't plug in the airport card. And that is... Uh, bit of a problem. So you need this adapter and they're getting extremely hard to find, very rare. So anyway, I am going to uh, piece everything back together, put this back in here, 
and we'll take it from there so I'll be right back okay so here is everything hooked up here and this is the typical um, what a early 2000s iMac would look like set up uh, this all could have came in 2000 except the white pro mouse would have been actually a black original one but uh, I always think the white looks better with the blueberries um, other than that this is a, a, a typical setup you could get and uh, as we notice we have my iMac G4's iSub hooked up to it because this particular system was the system the iSub was originally developed for and that's because um, these systems the Har Harman Kardon speakers that are in them down here sound incredible but they uh, tend to uh, literally blow up. The cones would literally just shoot out of them um, if you play them too loud. And they had a design flaw there. And that's because they're trying to make too much bass. And the ISOB remedies that and keeps you from blowing your speakers out. And that's why the ISOB was originally des designed. Um, I only have it hooked up there to show you. But this is what it would look like. And uh, the iSub actually came out in early or mid-2000. And um, these came out in late 99. But you could have bought that separately. And, um, you know, or special ordered it with like an Indigo or something like that. But that's the iSub. That's what it was originally meant for these speakers. And, um, you know, it makes these speakers even louder without needing to uh, worry about bass or blowing them up. Um, so that's, that's pretty neat. Uh, we also have the original USB uh, Apple keyboard connected to it. Um, this would have been error correct. And you can tell that these are error correct because they have graphite holograms on them instead of the Bondi Blue or Blueberry hologram from the late 98 early 99 uh, time period. Uh, this of course came out in late 99 and uh, this hologram actually came out around the time the graphite power max came out. So that's how you know that this is error correct. But the other ones look nearly identical and um, if you you know mix and match no one's really going to know. I'm just kind of a stickler for that so I got an error correct board. Um, so yeah, so that's the keyboard, and that's the whole setup. But if we notice over here, we also have an LCD, and I only have this LCD here so you can see the screen without having to worry about all the refresh rate problems. And um, it's only on camera. Uh, off of camera, uh, if you're looking at the screen, you can't tell anything. It's a nice, solid, sturdy, um, sharp image and it looks great but it's still a CRT you can't feel them CRTs so luckily I have a system that you can plug a VGA cable into like that pretty cool so we'll have the VGA hooked up and the VGA port was very handy for businesses and stuff they needed to show you uh, what was on the screen without having to turn the whole system towards the person or for like school or something put something up on a projector or something very useful and we'll be using that today so anyway we're going to turn this off and there's two ways we can turn the system on with either the power button here or the power button on the keyboard and uh, there's a, a big reason why this was the last keyboard with a power button. Why? <laughs> when you have the power button here, why do you need it here? But um, still, <laughs> um, it, it's understandable why Apple killed that off in mid-2000 with the Pro keyboard. So we'll turn it on with the keyboard for the heck of it. And here it comes. Now this is a newer hard drive, so it's a lot quieter. It doesn't have quite as good of a, a 90 sound to it, but it's still pretty good. And we can see the refresh rate there. It's a darker, crisper color uh, for the display compared to the LCD. But um, as you can see, the, the refresh rate's really painful to watch. 
So we'll be using this monitor to show you everything on here. But we'll let it boot up first. And it does boot up pretty quickly for a G3 400, as we can see here. Pretty cool. And here we go. Here's the desktop. Everything's booted up here. We should be connected to the internet and everything. So I'm going to set a few things up really quick to uh, prepare to show you some really neat little features here. And uh, then we'll wrap up the video. So let's get to it. Okay, so I currently have the microphone turned around because first off I thought we'd play some sound on here just so you can hear that. We'll uh, use the refresh rate monitor for a second here just to show you what it looks like. Uh, we'll open up iTunes here. I have iTunes uh, 9.1 something on here. Uh, 9.11 I think on here. The last truly G3 compatible one. 2.1 one also works but um, you have to hack it and stuff. This one will automatically install even though it's not supported. So anyway. We're going to play uh, Game Plan by Bad Snacks. Um, interesting names some of these bands have now uh, on the YouTube audio library, but hey, it's a great um, to test the sound with. So let's do that really quick. <laughs> So that gives you a general idea of what it sounds like. So now we'll uh, hop on to Facebook. Um, then we'll go through the specs of the system because I'm doing everything backwards for some odd reason. So anyway, let's uh, turn around the microphone and continue on. Okay, so to keep you guys from having a seizure looking at that, uh, we went over to the LCD here. And uh, we'll be using the LCD from now on to show you everything. But uh, rest assured, this is the same system. Uh, watch real quick. We'll uh, hit this. See? Same system. It's just the mirrored screen. So, yeah. Anyway, so we'll uh, do a quick Facebook here. Show you how fast the modern web is on the Classilla user agent and show you how useful this still is. Open up low end Mac. And this is all real time. Here we go. We're on low end Mac. And now we can uh, post something like Hi uh, from. 400, oh, 4,000, yeah, it's a fast iMac G3. Uh, blueberry, yeah, oh man, I can't spell. Blueberry, and um, filming EP4, what <laughs> happened? Yeah, guys, uh, you're, you're showing, you're seeing how well I ta type here. Of of and post. Ready? Post and boom. Here it is right there. We just did a live post on Facebook. 
and um, yeah er Facebook seems to work fine um, as you saw it popped up real quick there we can open up my page and it's just like boom you know real real fast you know real cool how this works so um, yeah anyway so we'll uh, hop over to Google real quick for the heck of it show you that Google works well it's searching with Yahoo for some odd reason Google presto real fast you know class Iller user agent always speeds everything up especially on 104 Fox makes it really useful and like you can see I can do a nice post and actually use this in everyday life still um, as long as you're able to survive with uh, trimmed down mobile websites and stuff but still it, it works great and you know it's a daily user there um, possibly so uh, let's uh, close out what's open here quit quit and we'll go over we'll turn this down first because it might get kind of loud why stop that Turn that down some. We'll go over the specs. iMac, Power Mac 2, 1, Power PC 750, 400 megahertz, um, 512 kilobits of L2 cache each. That's kilobytes of L2 cache. That's a, a lot for L2 cache there. Um, so that's, that's cool. 100 megahertz bus speed. Uh, the uh, original ones, I'm pretty sure, were 67 megahertz. Um, go over to what's in here. We have uh, Western Digital 18 gig here. Uh, well, 20 gig. It's been cut up into two partitions. And then there's the optical drive. It's um, just a, a normal old... Um, um, slot load CD-ROM drive there. In fact, while we're speaking about CD-ROM, let's see if I can find a CD here that we can uh, show you really quick. This won't run, but let's show you what and show you what it sounds like to load a disc. So I'm going to turn this microphone back around. on this is Apple service diagnostic I burned um, it's not going to run on this but it will show you that the drive does work you don't even have to push it it just takes it right in and spins it right up it should show up right here there it is okay so if I want to eject it I hit the eject button it's that simple this is how the uh, G4 cubes drive used to work too uh, but having it um, for, uh, vertically um, it wears them out quicker um, these will wear out too but watch barely just touch it it takes it itself really neat drive really cool how that works so let's flip this microphone back around and uh, we'll continue on with everything if I can get this microphone back on come on all right we got the microphone back on we'll eject the drive one last time really nice smooth functioning there so anyway so before we wrap up the video um, showing about all this stuff we will um, boot this into OS 9 so we'll restart it we'll go into the boot menu which the Tray loads don't have a boot menu. 
slot loads do. And here we go. Here's the boot menu, and we'll boot it into OS 9 once it loads up. Mm-hmm. Here we go. And enter. Happy Mac. Uh-oh. Well, um, that screen went off. OS 9 is apparently not set up with the monitor yet. Um, hmm. That's not good. That should do it. Yeah. It uh, set it to a lower resolution for some odd reason, but that fixed it. So anyway, here's OS 9. All the resources it's using, it's using 39 megs of RAM. Ooh. Yeah. Here's System Profiler. PowerPC 400 megahertz. You know, all that stuff. And, um, yeah, let's see here. Let's. Is this connected to the airport? It is not. So we'll connect this to my airport. See if it connects. It is connected. There it goes. Yeah, it took a second for it to register. I don't think I've ever had this online in OS 9, but we can do that. Uh, where is it in here? It is under in Internet Utilities. Clazilla. 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 There we go. Here we go. Yeah, this is literally the first time I think I've had this online in OS 9. So we'll move that up here, move up there. You can do it. Okay, it's not going to move. <laughs> um, Google. There we go. And there we go. We've got Google going on. And we can go to Facebook. Book. And it's complaining about encryption. And there we go. We're on Facebook. So yeah, even in OS 9, it's still usable real cool this whole system you know almost 20 years later this system's still usable today and it's a great system so the last thing i think we're going to do for the heck of it since you know we didn't really get to show jay's system we'll quickly show jay's system we'll hook it up and uh just quickly just turn it on and show you how it performs because the specs of this system <laughs> is way different. Uh, we've got 512 of, mag, uh, of RAM here and that's going to make a big massive difference. So yeah, let's shut her off and we'll uh, hook up Jay's grape. Alright, so we have Jay's system hooked up. This is all original as far as I know, even the hard drive. And we have hooked up the VGA to the back by removing the VGA panel. And uh, I'll show you what that panel looks like. A lot of people didn't use these ports, so when you buy one, even though they came in the box 
both um, one with the hole like in my blueberry and one without no one ever used the one with the hole usually so I only have one of those panels um, but I don't use this mag a whole lot yet so yeah so we'll turn it on and that's the classic 90s even 80s but nice strong 90s hard drive sound there so let's see what it does here yeah, the screen's a little dark but it is booting up here let's see what it does and this monitor is a very light color it's uh, this is a, a very purple color in the background uh, this is kind of like a, a raspberry color on this LCD so the color is off but who cares still shows you what you need to see here we go we have it almost booted up here and that's everything set up I literally have not gone through this um, since Jay's video um, click the eye icon if you want to watch that video uh, funny video like I said before so anyway yeah um, here's the system um, I can't remember the specs right offhand I think it's 192 megs of RAM 128 that's even worse than I thought so yeah it's a little slow but I will do something with it I will make it quicker more powerful etc etc um, and this one unlike my blueberry is actually reporting the serial number so that's that's a little odd don't know why the blueberry doesn't but yeah here's Jay's grape thank you Jay for this by the way and thanks Mike for the blueberry um, and yeah that's basically the end of day, today's episode so uh, guys don't forget I do have a patreon if you'd like to support me um, you can go over to uh, at the end of the video I, I'll have a link or uh, even in the description below there is a link to my patreon if you'd like to help support me and um, also uh, I am kind of being sponsored by sell your Mac even though this isn't one of those real videos if you have an Apple device you'd like to sell what the heck sellyourmac.com slash rutkmods link will be in the description um, yeah check them out sell something help me out help you out make some money real awesome but anyway thank you guys for watching for today and uh, this has been a Rutk Mods video Hello, I'm Greg Ratke of Ratke Mods, and welcome to episode 4 of season 3 of my PowerPC series. Today's episode, I'll be introducing you to my iMac G3s. Oh my god, this is heavy. Ugh. They're heavy. Try this again.